Bed and breakfast owner Karen Cooper is usually far too busy making scones for her guests to scan the grass for gold. But COVID changed that. Like everyone else in the hospitality business, it's been a really difficult year. So as I live in this wonderful location right next to the oldest Roman road in England, I sort of thought through the first lockdown, you know what, I really ought to discover what I've got on my doorstep. Her farmhouse is sandwiched between a 5,000-year-old burial site and a Roman temple. All of these were... All of these were found at the temple site? Yes. Just down the road? Yes. I might have a hoard of gold buried here. I mean, after all, the Romans walked all the way past my front door. It's not as far-fetched as it sounds. Michael Lewis tracks backyard finds for the British Museum. During lockdown, um, the period that we've had over the last few months, more and more people have been doing a bit of gardening work, particularly in the summer and some amazing discoveries have come up. Like this pile of 50 solid gold coins from apartheid-era South Africa, worth about $90,000, and unearthed in a garden north of London a few months ago. Another homeowner found this gold hoard dating back to 15th and 16th century Tudor England while pulling weeds. Some of the coins inscribed with the initials of King Henry VIII's wives. Searching for treasure in British fields is so popular, it's become a hit show called Detectorists. Basically the holy grail of treasure hunting. Well, no, the holy grail is the holy grail of treasure hunting. On social media, a constant stream of backyard finds. Not all valuable, but some still historical. Found in churchyards and pastures, woodlands and along walking paths, even under big old trees. The perfect landmark. But people obviously didn't have banks to kind of keep their savings in. They would bury them in the ground. And of course, sometimes people forgot where they, where they left it and couldn't come back for it. Only to be found hundreds of years later. Exactly. Crazy. Here in London, on the edge of the Thames, you don't even have to dig. You just wait for the tide to go out and look down. So much has been found and lost to private bidders in Britain that anything gold, silver, or more than 300 years old now has to be reported to the government. If it's declared a treasure, you can collect a reward. I just have a few pottery shards here, but people have found everything from a Tudor ring to the teeth of a woolly mammoth here. And it is a little die-cast Jeep. Karen's finds are starting to pile up. A toy, a tray, and while we were visiting, another beep. After a few minutes of digging, and with a bit of help, she found it. It is a coin! <laughs> Unfortunately, it's, it's 20p. 20. <laughs> <laughs> Almost vintage, from 1989, and worth about 30 cents. Right, not exactly a windfall, guys, but she's just getting started with this, so you never know. She may still find those Roman coins. And Chanel and Al, you can also find things in the U.S. just because our history doesn't go all the way back to the Romans. Well, at least we didn't have Romans in our country. <laughs> you can still find stuff. There was a find on a beach in Oregon a few years back of a coin that was more than 2,000 years old. Wow. So you never know. Hmm. That's you fine. Kelly, give the kids something to do. They can just go outside and just... Go yeah. out and find some treasure. Yeah. All right. Come back when you find well, something. Well, you can bury them first. There <laughs> exactly. you go. No, not the kids, the treasure. Okay. <laughs> Kelly Kobiea, thank you so much.